When you make a new SwiftUI app project, you'll get a bunch of files made for you and about 20 or so lines of code. Along here in Xcode on the left hand side of the window, you will see the project navigator listing the things we have in our project. Right now you can see we have wesplit.app. This is responsible for configuring the initial launch of our program and any data you want to create at the beginning can have a live the entire run of the program you might put in here. Below that is contentview.swift. This contains the main UI for your program and is where we'll be making this entire project. Below that is assets.exe assets. This thing is an asset catalog where you can add images, icons, colors, iMessage sticker packs, and much more. And below that is a group called preview content, which if you open out, you'll see inside contains another asset catalog. Again, images, icons, colors, and similar, but now just for debugging and designing. When you want to look at your layouts in a simulated environment, you can add things to this preview asset catalog. Now, depending on Xcode's configuration, you may or may not see file extensions here on the left. You can customize this. Go to the Xcode menu, choose Preferences. Then the General tab, change file extensions to hide all or show all or show only is down to you. I prefer to see them, so I have it on show all. Anyway, all our work for this project will be inside contentview.swift. And you can see there's a bunch of code in here already made for us by the Xcode template. There's some comments at the top here, uh, who made it, the project name, the file name, date, and so forth. They have two slashes at the top making them comments. That means they are ignored by Swift. They're usually used to describe what code does, but here it's some metadata about the file. Below that, there's some new pieces of code you might not have seen before, such as import Swift UI. Now, this tells Swift we want to use all the functionality given to us by the Swift UI framework, as well as any frameworks it imports, such as Foundation. Apple provides many, many frameworks for us to do our work, like machine learning, audio playback, image manipulation, and more. But rather than giving us access to everything ever in one massive lump, instead we selectively import the bits we actually plan to use. In this case, SwiftUI. Next up, we make a new struct called content view, which conforms to the view protocol. The view protocol comes from SwiftUI, and it's anything, anything that can be drawn to the screen all the buttons, all the text, all the images, all the colors, all the shapes, they're all some kind of view, including all our own layouts, which might build on their own layouts. A button here, then an image here, whatever, 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 whatever. That ends up being one view, composing multiple smaller views. Inside there, there is one computed property called body, which returns some view. This means it's going to return something that conforms to the view protocol, which in this case is our layout, uh, what we actually want to put on the screen. Now behind the scenes, this is actually going to result in a very long, complicated type of data, describing our exact layout. Oh, there's a grid of icons which scrolls around, and some of the labels are red, and there's a navigation bar, and who knows what. A long, complicated type, like literally thousands of characters. By just saying some view, we haven't got to worry about it. it. Swift will figure out what we're actually returning based on the code we have inside the body. Now, the view protocol only has one requirement, which is this body property. If you want to be a view, tell me what you plan to show. You can and you will add many more properties and methods to your views, but body is the only one that's required. Inside body is our actual layout. In this case, it's the text, hello world. Create a simple text for you saying, hello world. And it's a simple piece of text shown on the screen and they'll wrap automatically across multiple lines based on how much space is available. Below that, you'll see the padding method is being called on that text view. Now, Swift calls this a modifier because what we're doing is creating a wrapper around the text. We're modifying what it actually is. Text view, static line wrap text, padding, creates a new padded text view, text view plus some padding around it, some spacing around it, so no other views go too close to it. 
Below that is another struct called content view previews, which conforms to a preview provider protocol. This will not appear in our final shipping program. It's just the debugging, testing, and designing purposes in Xcode. So you can see a preview of your current layout inside Xcode as you work. It's over here for me. If you, if you see this thing right now, it's called the canvas, the thing on the right. Uh, if you don't see it currently, go to the editor menu and check canvas. You may have to press resume the very first time to have it start up. That's fine, it's a bit slow at first, but once it's going, it's good. Uh, the, the canvas is a virtual layout showing what our view is gonna look like when it runs on a real device. And it's really, really helpful. It'll simulate any kind of iOS device you want. So here's an iPod Touch, seventh generation. I can change that by clicking up here and saying, actually, I really want a, an iPhone 13 Pro. Uh, press resume again, <laughs> it'll have a little think, and then uh, play it back inside there. Just so you can see what your UI will actually look like on a real device. The canvas uh, we select here, iPhone 13 Pro, will also be used when we run the code in a virtual simulator of iOS devices. They will have an iPhone 13 Pro there as well. Very often you'll see that same message I saw, updating is paused, you can press resume whenever you want to, to make it start updating again. And from then on, it should, in theory, update as you type. So if I had goodbye world, bang, it appears there straight away. But rather than clicking resume again and again and again when it gets stuck, here's an important shortcut for you. Option command P It's basically pressing resume. Option command P It's the most important shortcut a Swift UI developer can know.